ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the best of speech is the Book of Allah. Wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa sharr al-umuri muhdathatuha, and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. Wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a, and everything we newly invent in this religion of ours is an innovation. Wa kulla bid'atin dalala, and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Wa kulla dalala tin fil nar. Every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire. So Alhamdulillah, it's been a long time, but we are really happy that we just decided on and embarked upon coming back to these family nights. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost, and we thank you for taking the time out we want to just gonna, we're going to set it to do it the first Friday of every month, unless that first Friday is a holiday, like in September, then we'll do it the second Friday next month. But let's try and get it in the habit, in your minds, that that first Friday of every month is reserved for the family nights, inshallah. Shh. Okay? It's reserved for the family nights so that we can come out, have some food together, and inshallah, enjoy each other's company and get some ilm, get some knowledge about our deen. For tonight's lecture, alhamdulillah, we are trying something a little bit different that we did for the school students during their school time in the month of Ramadan. And give us your feedback, because we want to deliver what's going to help us get closer to Allah. So we want to hear from you. We don't take it negatively. But we can't please everyone at the same time. So let us know, inshallah, what you think. Tonight's evening is for the recitation, ayah by ayah, of Surah Luqman, Surat Luqman, the, uh, about uh, Luqman al-Hakim, the wise one. He was not a prophet uh, or a messenger. He was a wise one who Allah, he mentioned by name. And Allahu alam, he was at the time of Prophet Dawood and Prophet Sulaiman, alayhim salam. When we come to this Qur'an, Allah, He said this Qur'an, هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ This Qur'an is the guidance for mankind with clear proofs for the guidance and criterion between right and wrong. Yet many of us only pay attention to it in Ramadan. And this is where we, we commit a crime. That this Qur'an is only paid attention to in Ramadan when Allah, He sent it for all of mankind, not just the Arabs. He sent it for all of mankind, for every generation that was to come. Allah, He says in the Qur'an, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا, رب, وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Allah says in the Qur'an what means, and the Messenger Muhammad Wasallam will say, My Lord, my people have deserted this Qur'an. And how sad it would be that we live as Muslims. We pray as Muslims. We love Allah, we love His Messenger Wasallam. We fast Ramadan, we pay our zakat, we make hajj. Yet on the day of resurrection, we'll be of those who deserted the Qur'an. So it's upon us to learn it and to implement it, to benefit from it. So if you like, inshallah, that we do these explanations of the Qur'an and parts of the Qur'an, then inshallah we can continue it on a more regular basis. To throw a hadith in there that we always remind each other with in Ramadan, it's a hadith, I believe, in Ibn Majah, and it is Sahih. Prophet Muhammad Wasallam he said, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ أَهْلِينَ مِنَ النَّاسِ Prophet Muhammad Wasallam he says, Allah has special people that He chooses from mankind. فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَنْ هُمْ They said, O Messenger of Allah Wasallam, who are they? He said, هُمْ They are أَهْلُ Quran, The people of the Qur'an, أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَخَاصَتُهُ the people of Allah, His special people. Because they were the people of the Qur'an. It's not good enough that you just memorize it and you don't understand it or implement it. 
It's not good enough that you just do that. It's good that you know what it means and that you implement it. So bi-ibnillahi ta'ala, we're going to begin, inshallah, tonight with Surah Luqman. Brother Muhammad Rafa'i will be reading every um, ayah one by one, and we will read its translation and give some more tafsir with respect to it. <laughs> So, Brother Muhammad read, A'udhu Billahi min ash shaytan rajim meaning, <clears throat> I seek refuge with Allah from shaytan, the accursed, the, the, the open enemy, the cursed one, for all time because he denied the sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah commanded him to bow down to Adam alayhi salam and he didn't do so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتُ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Allah says in the Qur'an, and when you want to recite the Qur'an, seek refuge with Allah from the shaytan. So every time you begin to read Qur'an, whether it's at the beginning of the surah or the end of the surah, you must recite, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Even the ulama from the scholars, they've said that in Surah Al-Fatiha, in every rak'ah, before you say Surah Al-Fatiha, you say, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, because of this ayah saying, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتُ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِدْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Tafadda. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the specially merciful. Ar-Rahman, the entirely merciful. Allah is merciful to everyone and everything. The kafir, and the Muslim, the animal, the human, the jinn, all of mankind, Allah is merciful to them. Ar-Rahim, now Allah's mercy is even more so for the believers. So Allah, He's entirely merciful to everyone and everything. And He's especially merciful, Ar-Rahim, to the believers, to those who believe in Him, in His oneness, who worship Him alone without partners, who follow His commands and the commands of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Alif Lam Mim So Alif Lam Mim These are letters at the beginning of some of the surah that we see in the Qur'an some of the chapters in the Qur'an that many people may say oh this is the name of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, or the likes of these matters when in actuality these letters they are miracles of the Qur'an we don't know if they have a meaning or what is meant by them these are letters that are miracles of the Qur'an and none but Allah knows their meanings. These are the verses of the wise book, the Qur'an. These ayat, they're verses, they're evidences and proofs for you. The words of our Creator subhanallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He spoke to Angel Jibreel alayhi salam himself, because Allah, He affirmed His speech in the Qur'an in many areas. One where He said, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Where Allah said, and Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam directly. هُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِلْمُحْسِنِينَ A guide and a mercy for the muhsineen. A guide and the mercy for the muhsin. The muhsin is the one who does good. The good doers. They do good, not so people can say, wow, what a cool person, what a good person. They do good for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah to be pleased with them, for Allah to love them, for Allah to yani, exclaim how good they are to the malaika. Allah says in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَافِ مِنَ الْغَيْذِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says what means, those who give in, uh, in wealth, from their wealth, in good times when they have the money, in hard times when they're fearing poverty, they control or repress their anger, they forgive people, they pardon people, they don't hold grudges. Allah loves the muhsineen. He loves these good doers. And then Allah gives us some more ayat of, uh, some more um, sifat, ex- examples of what the muhsin, the good doer is. <laughs> Those who perform a salah and give the zakah and they have faith in the hereafter with certainty, then these are from the description 
of the muhsinun. They have to be. You cannot be a good doer if you do not establish the prayer. Give the zakat and believe in the hereafter with certainty, with no doubt that you will be resurrected and face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًى مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Such are on the guidance from their Lord, and such are the successful. This is where true success is. The one who believes in the oneness of Allah, and establishes his prayer, and pays the zakat, and he believes in the hereafter, these are the ones who are successful. Not necessarily the one with the degrees on the wall, or... He owns 40 homes or he has large numbers in his bank account. Success with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al najah, al falah, you know, the one who's gonna be happy, be successful, successful, truly with Allah, he has these characteristics. Allah says what means and of mankind is he who purchases idle talk. This here mentioned lahu al-hadith. According to the ulama and the mufassireen, this one who purchases idle talk to mislead men from the path of Allah without knowledge, this refer, refers to music and singing. And if you find now especially now, the state of the affairs that we're in. How many times when somebody is sad, they go to music and singing rather than the book of Allah. Depressed, to music and singing rather than the book of Allah. Happy, they go to music and singing rather than thanking and remembering Allah. This is what has become of the times where this lahu al-hadith, this music, this singing, this has distracted us away from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Him and thanking Him, and asking Him for guidance. أَلَا بِذِكْرَ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ Indeed, Allah said, what means, indeed with the remembrance of Allah, will the hearts find rest. So, man of mankind is he who purchases this idle talk, music and singing the likes, to mislead men from the path of Allah without knowledge, and takes it. They take the path of Allah, they take these ayat, these verses of the Qur'an, by way of mockery for such there will be a humiliating torment, meaning the hellfire. With respect to this, we have a hadith narrated from Abu Amir or Abu Malik al-Ash'ari that he heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saying, from amongst my followers, there will be some people who will consider illegal uh, intimacy um, or the wearing of silk for the men or the taking of intoxicants, drugs or alcohol and the use of musical instruments as lawful. So here, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he foretold that where there will come people, and look, look what he did. He grouped zina, which we know clearly to be haram. He grouped with it unlawful musical, uh, he grouped with it the use of musical instruments, and the wearing of silk for men, and khamar. Khamar, just to allude on it, because it's a disease in society, is every intoxicant. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كُلُّ مُسْكَرٍ خَمْرٍ وَكُلُّ خَمْرٍ حَرَامٍ Everything that intoxicates is khamr. It's not just alcohol. Alcohol, drugs, wet drugs, dry drugs, marijuana, cocaine, LSD, shrooms, ecstasy. You go further out, you go to other things. Even what people don't want to hear from these things that mess with the mind, grog, and the likes of these matters, these are things which play with the mind, and they should not be utilized by the Muslim whatsoever, because they do have a level of intoxication. And if it intoxicates in a little, then a lot of it is haram. So he said there will come this time, and from them there will be some who will stay near the side of a mountain, and in the evening their shepherd will come to them, and their sheep, and ask them for something, but they'll say, come to us tomorrow, brushing them off. Saying, oh, we don't like, we don't have anything to help you with today. Come tomorrow. Allah will destroy them during the night and will let the mountains fall upon them and He will transform the rest of them into monkeys and pigs and they will remain so till the day of resurrection. This is the sin, yani the recourse, the recompense of doing these sins.
وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا وَلَّى مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَنْ لَمْ يَسْمَعْهَا كَأَنَّ فِي أُذُنَيْهِ وَقْرًا فَبَشِّرْهُ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ And when our verses of the Qur'an are recited to such a one, he turns away in pride, as, as if he heard them not, as if there was deafness in his ear, so announce to him a painful torment. These are the ones who, they want to block out learning anything about Allah or His Messenger Wasallam about this deen. Those who mock it because of pride, because of arrogance. And although it will be alluded to later, inshaAllah, we will mention it يعني, still at the time. That this pride and the arrogance, it spoils the heart. It spoils it. This is why the Prophet Wasallam he said, لا يدخل الجنة The person will not enter Jannah. من كان في قلبه ذرة من ذرة أو من من خردل من كبر. That the person who has an Adam's weight, a mustard seed of arrogance or pride in his or her heart, this person will not enter Jannah. إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات النعيم. Verily, those who believe in Tawheed and do righteous deeds for them are gardens of paradise. The ones who believe in the oneness of Allah. This is a pillar of our belief. Not to, to say I believe in God. There's many who say they believe in God. But they worship other people or other things. Okay? Those who يعني, believe in the oneness of Allah and they do righteous deeds. Al-Iman, Iman, faith, belief, is not just a belief in the heart. It's a belief in the heart. And it's the statement of the tongue. And it's the actions of the limbs. You cannot say, I believe, and not do good actions. You cannot say, I believe, with your tongue, and you don't really believe it in your heart. These three components must be together for iman. <laughs> so for them, they will be in gardens of delight, paradise, to abide therein. It is a promise from Allah in truth, and He is the Almighty, the All Wise. He has created the heavens without any pillars. Pillars that you don't see or pillars that are, are not visible to you. And He has set on the earth firm mountains lest it should shake with you. And He has scattered therein moving living creatures of all kinds. And we send down water as rain from the sky, and we cause plants of every goodly kind to grow therein. This is the creation of Allah. So show me that which those whom you worship besides Him have created. Nay, the Dhalimun, the polytheists, the wrongdoers, the ones who do not believe in the oneness of Allah, they are in plain error. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ نِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ and we indeed bestowed upon Luqman al-Hikmah. So he's called Luqman, many times Luqman al-Hakim, the wise one. We bestowed upon Luqman al-Hikmah, this wisdom, this religious understanding. And we said this, يعني, as we said in the khutbah today, مَنْ يُرَضُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٍ يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ That the one who Allah wants good for, He gives them understanding, true understanding of the religion. So we bestowed upon Luqman al-Hikmah, give thanks to Allah, and whoever gives thanks, he gives thanks for the good of his own self. 
And whoever is unthankful, then verily, Allah is all rich, free of all needs, worthy of all praise. Allah does not need us. We don't not, if none of us in this room or on this earth thanked Allah, we would not decrease from His majesty or His kingdom, not even the drop, not even a drop of water, not even the weight of a mustard seed. Allah does not need us to do so. We are the ones who benefit. And this, this would make you get to the level of the believer. Why? What did Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, he, say, he said, عفوان, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٍ فَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ صَرَّاءٍ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءٍ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, how strange and amazing is the affair of the believer. And this is the case only for the believer. Only a believer has this case of strangeness and amazement. Why? If he is given something good, he doesn't pat himself on the back. He doesn't puff himself up with pride. He thanks Allah for it. He thanks Allah for whatever he has. And this is better for him. And if he's tested with a trial, he trust, he's tested with a calamity, he's tested with a hardship, then he's patient with that. And this is better for him. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ So now we get to the ayat where Luqman al-Hakim, he's going to teach his son things. So this is another proof to us, for the kids, you have to pay attention. Okay, so sit quietly, pay attention. Allah, He said, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتُ الْقُرْآنَ فَإِذَا قُرَأْتُ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَانْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah said, when the Qur'an is being recited, listen to it and be silent, so that you may uh, be bestowed with mercy, insha'Allah. So, benefit from this, insha'Allah. Luqman, he taught his son, and this was the command to all of us, that your children, you're not like uh, يعني, the cattle, the, the, the cows, they have their uh, babies or whatever, their baby cows. There is no maternal attachment or instinct in the cow. But as us and humans, we love. We love what we have in our life. We love our children. It's natural. And you see it with some other animals. This is where we differentiate what true love is. It's not giving them everything they want. This would be not love in the slightest form. You would actually be harming your child. This is where you have to teach them. And we saw this being the example of Prophet Ibrahim السلام, of Luqman al-Hakim السلام. So we need the kids to quiet down a bit, please. So sisters, if there's some rowdy kids in your area, if you can go towards the sisters' hall, barakallahu feekum. May Allah reward you. So the ayah was, and remember when Luqman said to his son, advising him, O oh my son, join not in worship others than others with Allah. Verily, Joining others in worship with Allah is a great zulm, a great wrong indeed. What is the ayah that we mention all the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran? He says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yashurka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha. Allah says what means, indeed Allah does not forgive this sin of shirk. He does not forgive this sin of associating partners with Allah or worshipping others with Allah or things with Allah. But he'll forgive any other sin other than that. So even if you did some other sins, even if you did some other sins, come over here, sit down, okay? If he did some other sins, Allah may forgive him even if he didn't repent. But shirk, you must make a sincere tawbah for. So he advised his son first and foremost, with this thing, do not join and worship others with Allah. When Prophet Muhammad Wasallam he sent Mu'ad bin Jabal to Yemen, he didn't tell them, go and take away their alcohol and make sure you tell them about zina. He said, you call, go and call them. You're going to people of the book. Call them to worship Allah alone without partners. The hadith continues, if they accept this, then tell them Allah farada alayhim khamsa salawatu salawat fi yawmihim. Then if they accept tawheed, then tell them that they have to pray five times in their day. Then once they do that, then tell them and so on and so on. So we must do the same with our children. Tawheed first. 
For the callers of Islam, as Shaykh Albani wrote in his book, Tawheed is the first thing we should call to. To worship Allah alone without partners. And not associate anyone or anything with Him in worship. وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرُ And we have enjoined on mankind, the males and the females, to be dutiful and good to their parents. His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship. And his weaning is in two years. Give thanks to me and to your parents. To me is your final destination. In this ayah, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning that Luqman, after he mentioned to his son to not, يعني, uh, to not worship others with Allah, we see the mentioning of the parents and holding them in high esteem. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma he said, there are three, three things in the Qur'an, they can't be separated. You take the two of them or you reject it completely. And if you reject it, you turn away from Islam. Ati Allah wa ati Rasul. Give thanks, uh, obey Allah and obey His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. These two cannot be separated. You can't say, I obey Allah, I follow the Qur'an, but I deny the sunnah. And we mentioned this in the khutbah today. This is foolish. And you can't do the opposite. That's number one. Number two, zakat To establish the prayer and give the zakat. These two things are mentioned over 80 times in the Qur'an. You can't separate the two, according to Ibn Abbas. And thirdly, the third point, the third thing, anashkur li wa li and give thanks to me and to give thanks to your parents. These two can't be separated. You can't give thanks to Allah and not to your parents. And you can't give thanks to your parents without thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا واتبع سبيل من أناب إلي ثم إلي مرجعكم فأنبئكم فأنبئكم بما كنتم تعملون. But if they both strive with you to make you join in worship with me others than that which you have no knowledge. If your parents call you to do anything which is against Islam. To worship other than Allah, to commit a shirk, to commit a kufr, to commit a bid'ah, to commit something which is innovated or something which is not sanctioned in the religion, then obey them not. This is the only time you don't listen to your parents, is if they tell you to do something against Allah or against His Messenger wasallam, and behave with them in the world kindly and follow the path of Him who turns to me in repentance and in obedience, then to me will be your return, and I will tell you what you used to do. So we must take heed of this principle. لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق There is no obedience to a created thing when it means disobeying the Creator. We don't obey, we don't obey anybody or anything from the creation when that would be disobedience or disobeying Allah or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we must affirm this principle. And we also remind ourselves with the parents that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَكْبَرِ الْكَبَائِرِ He said in the authentic hadith وسلم, should I not tell you what the greatest of sins are, what is the most majorest of sins? قَالُوا بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ He said, tell me, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, He said, الْإِشْرَاكُ بِاللَّهِ وَعُقُوكُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ He said, the most majorest of sins is to join in worship with Allah to commit shirk and to be disobedient to the parents. To be disobedient to the parents. This includes even the word of uff or gosh or ah uh, or any sound of that. This is considered. In your book nowadays, many of you say this isn't disobedience or I'm not being rude or I'm not talking back and this is foolishness. This is disobedience to the parents and you're committing the sin right after shirk. So we should be mindful of it. 
يا بني إنها إن تكم قال حبة من خردل فتكم في صخرة أو في السماوات أو في الأرض يأتي بها الله إن الله لطيف خبير. O my son, if it be anything equal to the weight of a grain of a mustard seed, mustard seed, and though it be in a rock. Or in the heavens or in the earth, Allah will bring it forth. Everything when Allah resurrects it and brings it out, it will be brought out. Even the things we don't see. Verily, Allah is subtle in bringing out that grain, well acquainted with its place. Ya bunayya aqim salata wa amur bil ma'roof wa anha'anil munkar wa asbir ala ma asabak. So he said, O oh my son, aqim salah, perform the prayer, wa'mur bil ma'roof, and join what is good on the people, people. So this establishing of the prayer is that the prayer is established in its time and is done correctly. As the Prophet ﷺ prayed, he said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli, pray as you have seen me praying. This was the hadith and the command of the Prophet ﷺ. So he said, Oh my son, establish the prayer. So what do you think we should advise our children? After tawheed, after tawheed establish the prayer. Enjoin the ma'roof. Enjoin the ma'roof on the people. Meaning, teach people tawheed. Teach them to worship Allah alone without partners. Teach them all that is good. And forbid the munkar. Forbid disbelief. For this, forbid this belief in the oneness of Allah, in the politism of all of its kinds, in all evil and all bad, and bear with patience whatever befalls you. Whatever happens to you, be patient. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those who are patient. Allah loves them. Because being patient with something means that you accept that Allah chose this for you. Verily, these are some of the important commandments ordered by Allah with no exemption. ولا تصعر خدك للناس ولا تمش في الأرض مرحا إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور. Allah says what means and turn not your face from away from men with pride nor walk in insolence through the earth. Verily Allah likes not any arrogant boaster. We mentioned the hadith. The person will not enter Jannah if they have a mustard grain, an Adam's, a mustard seed, an Adam's weight, a grain's weight of kibir, of arrogance or pride in their heart. This person will not enter Jannah. And it's said to walk on the earth with insolence, with humility. Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan, Furqan, yeah, وَعِبَادَ الرَّحْمَنِ yeah. yeah. وَعِبَادَ الرَّحْمَنَ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَ وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Allah, He says, Ibad al-Rahman, the slaves of the most merciful, the servants of the most merciful. What a title may Allah make us from them. The slaves of the most merciful. They are those who, they walk through the earth with humility. And when the foolish come to them, trying to get them to speak loud, to raise their voices, to curse, to cuss, to say bad words, qalu salama. They respond in a way which is better, a peaceful way. A way which is not reciprocating the way of that foolish person. And, and be moderate or show no insolence in your walking and lower your voice. Verily, the harshest of all voices is the braying of the donkey. The donkey's noise is the harshest of voices. So the command was be moderate in the way you talk. Do not show insolence or pride or arrogance, but be humble and have humility in your walking, in the way you talk. And uh, then the comparison uh, was made that verily the harshest of all voices is like the voice of the donkey. 
ألم تروا أن الله سخر لكم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وأسبغ عليكم نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة ومن الناس من يجادل في الله بغير علم ولا هدى ولا هدى ولا كتاب منير See you not, O men, that Allah has subjected for you whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth, and has completed and perfected His graces upon you, both apparent with tawheed. This is a blessing from Allah. We could have been the people who worship stones or idols. We could have been the people who worship many gods. We could have been a people who worship, or we say that God has a son and a mother and a father and is part of three. We could have been a people who worshipped yani, statues. But Allah, He blessed us with this. So, don't you not see that Allah has blessed and perfected graces upon you. The apparent ones like Tawheed, the lawful pleasures of this world, including health, including good health, having good looks, good clothing, reasonable places of living, good food, <clears throat> and, and knowledge, wisdom, guidance for doing righteous deeds, and the pleasures and the delights of the hereafter in paradise. Yet of mankind is those who dispute about Allah without knowledge or guidance or a book giving light. The Qur'an is the light that takes you out of the dark tunnel of this dunya. Yet there are still those who dispute whether Allah exists or not, billah, or whether Allah has really blessed them with things, thinking that their own hands have made them be the success that they are in this dunya. Tafaddal. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا أَوَلَوْ كَانَ أَوَلَوْ كَانَ أَوَلَوْ كَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ And when it is said to them, follow that which Allah has sent down, they say, no. We shall follow that which we found our fathers following. Would they do so even if shaitan invites them to the torment of the fire? This is the comparison of following those who say, yani, I'm just going to do what my forefathers did. Let's face it. Every generation that comes, the sunnah is being lost. So then you will get to someone who actually goes to study, goes to find out what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said and did, how the Sahaba said and did it, based on what they learned from the best of mankind. Al-Uswatul Hasana, the best example and role model, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Yet what do you have? You have those who will still say, but I was taught this the way I was growing up. This is the way we pray back home. This is the way I stand in prayer back home. This is the way we do such and such. This is a great crime that you commit against your own soul. And the comparison was made to, if that's the case, that you just want to follow what you were following based on how you were raised, would you follow shaitan if he invited you to the fire? <laughs> Kids, try and hold on. We're getting towards the end of the surah, inshallah. وَمَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَجَاهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى وَإِلَى اللَّهِ عَاقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ And whosoever submits his face to Allah, meaning he follows Allah's deen, the tawheed, he worships Allah alone with sincere faith, the oneness of Allah with his lordship, that Allah is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, what you see, what you don't see, that he created all of it, that even though Mikael is the angel in charge of the... the, the the clouds and the vegetation, even though Israfil has his, uh, the angel has his lips on the horn, even though you have these angels, Munkir and Nakir, coming to question the people in the grave once they are buried and the likes of this, all of this happens by Allah's Lordship. Nothing happens on this earth without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believe in the oneness of His Lordship, the oneness of His worship. We worship Allah alone without partners. Yet you still have some today, going and committing shirk at the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, writing a dua on a paper and throwing it into his grave area, or making dua to the Prophet ﷺ. Some of these people you listen to. Some of them they're famous. 
Some of them, they have the most followers on YouTube. And yet, they're praying to or making dua to or calling upon Prophet Muhammad wasallam. This is shirk. This is the evilest of sins. Prophet Muhammad wasallam. he said, فَإِنِّي عَبْدَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ I am the servant and slave of Allah and His Messenger wasallam. So how can we ascribe such a thing? And then we give the oneness of Allah's names and His attributes. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ كُفْرُهُ إِلَيْنَا مَرْجِعُهُمْ فَنُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ عفوا, for correct, uh, finishing the ayah before. So whoever submits his face himself to Allah while he is a muhsin, a doer of good deeds totally for Allah's sake, not for showing off, not to gain praise or fame, they do them in accordance with the sunnah. Because for your deeds to be accepted, there's two conditions. Ikhlas, sincerity. That you do it for Allah to be pleased with you, and to love you, and to accept it from you. Not so people can say you're such a good person. And the second thing, ittiba' la sunnah Rasulillah. That there is adherence to the sunnah of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. This person has really understood La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, that there is no God, no deity, no thing other than Allah, and there is no God, no deity, no thing worthy of worship except for Allah, alone without partners, and that Muhammad Sallallahu is his slave and his messenger and servant. And to Allah return all the matters for decision. Whoever disbelieves, let not his disbelief grieve you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to us is their return. We shall inform them what they have done. Verily Allah is the all-knower of what is in the breasts of mankind. We let them enjoy for a little while. Those who disbelieve, they're going to enjoy in this earth. In this earth. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ الدُّنْيَا سِجِنُ mu'min. This dunya is the prison for the believer. وَجَنَّةُ kafir, But it's the paradise for the disbeliever. This is where they're going to enjoy. So we let them enjoy for a little while. Then in the end, we shall oblige them to enter a great torment. Torment. يعني جهنم. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah says what means, and if you, O Muhammad وسلم, ask them, who has created the heavens and the earth? Surely they're going to say Allah. Even the Quraysh, the, from the Mushrikeen from the Quraysh, the, the polytheists from the Quraysh, who used to worship those idols, if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they would say Allah. So they believed in this Tawheed al rububiyyah they believed in the Lordship of Allah, but what did they do? They didn't only worship Allah, they worshipped others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, they say, all praise and thanks are for Allah, and most of them, but most of them do not know. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ to Allah belongs whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth. Verily, Allah, He is Al-Ghani, the rich one, the free one, free of all needs. Allah does not need us even. We have not done a favor when we make sajda, or make ruku' or prayed our five times a day, or prayed the rawatib, the twelve sunan, to get that home in Jannah. We have not done anything that Allah needs, but Allah will reward you for doing what He commanded you to do, the worthy one who is worthy of all praise. وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٌ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَةٌ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ And if all the trees on the earth were pens and the sea were ink to write, with seven seas behind it to add to its supply. So imagine all of the ocean. Yani, you fly over it and you think, when is it going to end? When is it going to end? When is it going to And that plane's going how many hundreds of miles? 
all the ocean, if it was ink, and then you brought seven more seas like it on top of it, as ocean, if you brought more than that, as ink, the words of Allah would not be exhausted. The words of Allah would not be exhausted. Verily, Allah is Almighty, All-Wise. مَا خَلْقُكُمْ وَلَا بَعْثُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ The creation of you all and the resurrection of you all are only as the creation and the resurrection of a single person. Verily, Allah is the all-hearer, the all-seer. Allah hears all things, Allah sees all things. For Him to create all of us took Him nothing and it was no exhaustion. And for Him to resurrect us all will be the same thing. It will not take anything away from His majesty or might. أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَيُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ كُلٌّ يَجْرِي كُلٌّ يَجْرِي إِلَى أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ See you not, O Muhammad ﷺ, that Allah merges the night and the day. You see the decrease in hours in the night, they get added to a longer day. You see the longer day hours when they get shorter, they get added to the night. And Allah merges the day into the night. And He has subjected the sun and the moon, each running its course for a term appointed and that Allah is well acquainted with what you do. That is because Allah, He is the truth. And that which they invoke besides Him is al-batil. What you invoke besides Allah is falsehood. Satan and all other false deities. And this is what shaitan he calls towards. And that Allah, he is the most high, the most great. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, whoever dies while still invoking anything other than Allah as a rival, Allah will place this person in Jahannam, in the hellfire. أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ الْفُلْكَ تَجْرِي فِي الْبَحْرِ بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ بِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ لِيُرِيَكُمْ مِنْ آيَاتِهِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ See you not that the ships sail through the sea by Allah's grace and that He may show you of His signs. Verily in this are signs for every patient and grateful person. وَإِذَا غَشِيَهُمْ مَوْجٌ كَرُّلَ لِدَعَوُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ فَمَنْ فَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَصِدٌ وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا كُلُّ خَتَّارٍ كَفُورٍ and when waves cover them like shades, like clouds or the mountains of seawater, they invoke Allah, making their invocations for Him only. But when Allah brings them safe to land, they are, there are among them those who stop in between. They stop between belief and disbelief, between iman and kufr. But none denies our signs except every perfidious ingrate. In this, يعني, we see a prime example. How many of us only call upon Allah when we're in what we think is need? When we have a problem, when we have some situation in life, some trial or calamity. But when we don't have any of those, Allah is the last thing on our mind. Worshipping Him is the last thing on our mind. Praising Him is the last thing on our mind. Thanking Him is the last thing on our mind. Doing more for His pleasure is the last thing on our mind. This is where we enter the gray waters of being between belief and disbelief. This was the, the similitude given here. When they're on the sea, they're afraid for their life. They hear the, the storm, the thunder, their ship is rocking so much, they think they're going to be overthrown. They call upon Allah at that time. But when they, become, when they come safe to land, they act like they didn't need Allah. They got there because of something they did. So let us not be of those who call upon Allah only in hard times. Because Allah will remember you if you call upon Him in good times.
يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا إن وعد الله حقا فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور O mankind, be afraid of your Lord by keeping your duty to Him and avoiding all evil. Yes, we're supposed to hope for Allah's mercy. Yes, Allah al-Ghafoor rahim Allah is the most forgiving, the entirely merciful. That is true. But as Ibn al-Qayyim, he narrated, the life of the Muslim is like a bird. The head of the bird is the mahabba lillah, that you, the mahabba, yani that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who doesn't love Allah, he's as good as a bird that has his head cut off. Does a bird that has his head cut off have a life? I'm asking you. No. no. So the one who doesn't love Allah, you might be walking and talking and breathing, but you're lifeless. <clears throat> and then the wings of the bird have to be two even wings. One, al-raja, yani that you hope for Allah's mercy. The other one, al-khawf, that you fear Allah's punishment. Can a bird with one wing flap and fly? No. It may take off like a foot, and then it's, it's hitting the ground again. It's not possible. This is the life of the Muslim, the true one, the one that wants to be a believer. He balances fearing Allah, keeping his duty to Allah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said, ma kunt. Fear Allah wherever you may be. Follow up the evil deed or the sin you do with a good one. And behave with the people with good character and in a good manner. So in the ayah, O mankind, be afraid of your Lord. By keeping your duty to Him, avoiding all evil. By doing this, it's like you're putting a barrier between yourself and Allah's punishment. And fear a day when no father can avail aught for his son, nor a son avail aught for his father. You ain't gonna be able, or you're not gonna even care to help your children. You're not gonna be care to help your parents. That day you're running. The day that a person, he will flee. The day of resurrection, where he will be called to question by Allah, he'll flee from his brother. He'll flee from his mother and father. He will flee from his wife and from his children. That day everyone will only care about their own situation and themselves. So, <clears throat> verily, the promise of Allah is true. Let not then this worldly present life deceive you, nor let the chief deceiver, shaitan, Satan, deceive you about Allah. Allah's promise is true. This life, you're allowed to enjoy it. Allah told you in the Qur'an, you can say, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana. Allah told you, you can make the dua, Oh Allah, give us good in this life. It's not that this has to be a life of misery, or a life of, of pain or sorrow. No, but you enjoy what is halal, what Allah has ordained, and you stay away from what is haram. And do not let the, she, the chief deceiver, shaitan, deceive you. Allah said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوْ Shaitan is an open enemy to you. Avowed an avowed enemy, so treat him as an enemy. None of you, if your human enemy came to your door, would you let him in your home? You wouldn't even open the door. Actually, you might start plan and plot, planning and plotting on how you're gonna get him away from your house or do something to harm him before he can harm you. This should be how you treat shaitan. Last ayah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثَ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ وَمَا تَدْرِ نَفْسٌ مَا ذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدًا وَمَا تَدْرِ نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ uh, so uh, before the translation of this last verse in Sahih al-Bukhari, we have a hadith that this ayah, يعني, it provides the keys of, of the unseen are five. And those five are mentioned in this hadith, in this ayah. Verily, the ayah says, Allah says what means verily, Allah with Him alone is the knowledge of the hour. 
Allah only knows when the hour is. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, someone tried to say he knows when it was and he refuted them. And he got upset with them. Saying only Allah knows when it is. So with Allah alone is the knowledge of the hour. He sends down the rain, when it's going to rain, when it's going to... We see clouds, in the forecast it's rain and we don't get a drop. And we see something that says 10%, 15% or no rain and subhanAllah it comes in and it rains. And he knows that which is in the wombs. Allah knows what's in the womb. Allah knows if the child has been conceived or not. Allah knows whether that child, they will grow up to be happy or sad, making it to Jannah or not. Whether they be rich or poor, whether they will live, yani, how many years, how many months, how many days, how many minutes, how many seconds. Only Allah knows those things. And no person knows, Afwan, no person knows what he will earn tomorrow. No one knows what their destination will be, whether it's Jannah, Paradise, or Jahannam, the hellfire. And no person knows in what land he will die. None of us know this. And this is a further affirmation that we should, and I remind us here, that we should be buried in the land, in the area we die. There should be no need to take the body elsewhere, unless it's to get it to an Islamic cemetery, if there wasn't one closer to you. Verily, Allah is the all-knower, well acquainted with all things. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, wa shahadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. When we co- conclude the Qur'an, we conclude with this conclusion. And this is closer to the sunnah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, we praise Allah and His perfection, and we thank and glorify Him, and we praise Him uh, to, to uh, abundant limits. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except for Him. I seek your forgiveness, and I repent to you. And alhamdulillah, this concludes Surah Luqman. It's a beautiful surah with very profound insight and advice on us on how to live our lives, what to educate our children with. May Allah make us of those who not only learn the Qur'an, but we also implement it. Amen. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ مَنْ عَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and he teaches it. Or she teaches it. So you've learned some things. Anyone who you teach, from what you learn tonight, you will be rewarded for it. And anyone they teach from what you taught them, you will still get the reward because of that domino effect. So may Allah make us of His righteous servants and His ones that He is pleased with and grant us guidance to worship Him the way He deserves to be worshipped.